Food. We could talk about food for the next 72 weeks. <laughs> I'm going to condense that into about, um, it's about three minutes. It's probably going to be a lot more than three minutes. <laughs> How I take on food is I do the research on like if I eat pasta, what what will it give me? What nutritional value will pasta give me? If I eat a banana, what nutritional value will that give me? So what I do is like 50-50. 50% of what I take in is based on research. What, what will it do for me? And the other 50% is how my body affects how when i eat this how does my body get affected for example when i eat pasta my body gets tired so i cut that out of my diet when i eat fruit and vegetables and especially when i juice them and um just look up juicing online we don't have there's a whole segment on it we we don't have time to get into it now but but when you make the juice when you make the veggies and the and, and the fruit into juices that does a lot to my body that picks me up and so I, that's what I do. And I, and I like fish. I, I eat mm -hmm. cooked fish and um, that's just what my body wants. So basically my personal diet, based on like the research that I did and what, based on what my body wants is I eat nothing but fruits and vegetables and cooked fish. So basically I'm a raw foodist and occasionally I'll eat fish. And so, and so what it's, it's one diet is not for one specific diet my specific diet may not be right for you, but find what's right for you. Experiment and, um, and find what's right for you and settle down to, to what makes your mind and your body and your soul happy. Also, I wanted to add to that, <clears throat> and this is something that I've had to, to teach myself how to do, um, and that is to be very aware of how something feels in my body after I eat it. How do I feel an hour after I eat it. Do I feel like crap? Even though it was really good to eat at the time, do I feel just awful afterwards? And so it's been a constant relearning how to, this eating process, learning how to eat more consciously and to be aware of how things feel in my body afterwards. And um, fortunately I found that uh, being a, a raw food vegan is, is really my path. And um, I've never felt bad after eating raw foods. Mm -hmm. It's it's any time I deviate from that, I immediately begin to feel uh, much less conscious, and I don't feel as good. So yeah. So, right. So to give the viewers at home some research to to look up, um, we're, not, we're not telling you to be a vegan or a raw foodist or to eat meat or eat dairy or avoid it or. But it's a good good way to um, some of the research to do do research on raw food, do research on organic food, do research on eating for your blood type. Like if you happen to know your blood type, and look at the foods perfectly associated with for that blood type. Um, what else? What other kind of research can I do? Cleanses. Um, that's if you want to go overboard, because because cleanses is different than eating. Um, the so more, we'll, we'll get to cleanses in a second. I just want to, the overall thing is find out, do all these research on food and then decide what works best for your body. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's it. Yeah. And then, you know, we should have a whole talk about cleanses, but is, is there anything else that the viewers can look up besides, besides that? Kind of stuff. I wouldn't say look up, but I like what you were saying about research and decide yeah. for yourself. That's kind of, you know, no, I stopped eating dairy and stopped eating bread, not because they're like necessarily these horrible things. It's just what I found after cutting out dairy for a little while was my allergies cleared up. <laughs> oh, With surprise, bread, surprise. yeah, like I was having you know sneezing fits in the morning. Yeah. Dairy, for whatever reason, when I don't eat it, I no longer have that. Bread, I would eat it, and it would taste good. Don't get me wrong, I love the taste of bread, but the truth is that I would feel just kind of not good afterwards, you know, bloated or whatever it is. I just felt too full. So that was my choice. I decided that I'd rather feel good than have the taste of bread. Mm -hmm. And that to me is like a very sensible kind of research, researching how your body reacts to these different things that you're putting in it. Yeah, it's a very good point. Um, I, like you, I, if I have, uh, you know, anything with gluten in it, immediately 
I have, uh, you know, I start getting junk in my throat and uh, my nose will start running. And uh, I'll sneeze, you know, occasionally, depending on how bad it is. But, you know, being part of being uh, a conscious eater is being conscious of how it affects you. Yes. Really pay attention to how things affect you. I'm just beginning this journey on eating. I've, I've only been a raw food vegan for about six months. And um, it's, it's taken about a year prior to that of just being a vegetarian. And uh, learning how, to, how things affect me, it's, it's really been a challenge. And um, cleanses has been a, a very good a way of, of helping me go down that path. So anyway, that was it. I, awesome. Go ahead. I do have one more thing to add for the viewer, and, and I'm not saying you should do this, but simply to experiment for yourself. Experiment with taking deep breaths in between each morsel of food, whether you're actually eating food or whether you're drinking a green smoothie. I tend to like drink more nowadays than eat, but I find that if I take deep breaths in between each morsel of food, like the energy of that food amplifies so that I need to eat less. That's what I found for me. Great, and um, just, two, just two facts for the viewer, uh, amplifying what you said. Um, th every bite that we take should be chewed, st statistically, 23 times before swallowing. It is, I mean, that's insane. You know, like it's it's um it's 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 a uh, digestion actually doesn't start here. It starts here. It grinds up the food. You have um you have your saliva that's in there that that mixes in with the food and helps with the with the digestion. So um so that amplifies what you said. I want to say something about gluten, and um yeah I know nowadays everybody's um a lot of people are gluten free and um. Pure gluten is fine for the body. It's just that when it's made in, in this way where it's hybridized, meaning like cloned, the wheat is cloned, then that means that the gluten, it gets restructured and it doesn't, it affects the body in a negative way. When you, when you eat food like spelt pasta, for example, or, or anything spelt, it's not mainstream yet, so it's not hybridized yet. So that gluten is fine. So that's um, that's a tidbit about gluten, and Thank um, you for that. you're you're very welcome. When I when I switched to from from regular pasta to spelt pasta, it made a world of difference. Oh, good. And yeah. um, and then uh, and and then now I don't eat any pasta at all. Now let's go. I th I think I think I we're think we're good. done with the food topic. Yeah, yeah. let's just yeah. talk five just two minutes about cleanses. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like um, if you want to go overboard on this, like if you want to go because there's food, the right food for you, and doing your research and picking the right food for you. Now, if you want to go overboard and do cleanses, well, we just talked about the master cleanse, which seems to be really popular and has a lot of benefit. And um, the reason why cleanses are so important is, uh, let's say here's. Here's your mouth, and then the food comes here, your stomach, and then all it goes all around your digestive tract. Let's say you're 30, 40, 50 years old. For 50 years, um, some of you, the food that you've been eating is not 100% healthy, so the more unhealthy it is, the more it gets stuck in the walls of the intestines. And uh, when you do a cleanse, such as the master cleanse, it takes... The, the, the food that's stuck from the walls, it takes it out. Even if you eat healthier, it takes it out a little bit. But if you, if you eat, if you do an out cleanse, it takes it out more dramatically. So, and, and, and what, what, we mean by, what we mean by take it out is it, is it gets unstuck from the intestinal walls and gets out. You get put it out when you go to the bathroom. <laughs> uh, so, so cleanses are huge. Master cleanse, there's a colon cleanse. Look up, there's a variety of colon cleanses online. There's liver cleanse. There's a parasite cleanse. Um, I did uh, something called a simple cleanse uh, through my fit life. Um, that's what really helped me to bridge the gap between vegetarianism into uh, veganism. That was a nice, mm -hmm. nice segue for me. Can you describe that my fit life? Um, the, the simple cleanse. My f or the simple cleanse is is. Basically, you you take it in. It's a it's a 21 day cleanse, and you eliminate 
um, certain foods in the beginning, and it's a progressive elimination. And uh, it, it worked really well for me. I don't. I can't really go into too much detail on so that. So it's not specific ingredients. It's just slowly eliminating food from your life. Right. Well, okay. like the first thing is yeah. uh, eliminate all the caffeine, uh, medications, uh, um, any alcohol or drugs that you're doing. You have to eliminate all those in the first week. And uh, my first three days I thought I got hit by a bus uh, it was just devastating and it was because I was drinking so much coffee but uh, as soon as I got through that first three days then everything just got a lot better that's huge so this this like we'll wrap up this segment okay. cleansing reactions right so when you're on a deep cleanse like a master cleanse or or some of these other colon cleanses or liver cleanses your body will react because you're just used to, you were saying you were drinking coffee before the cleanse. Right. So your body is used to, let's say, toxic. So you're addicted to this stuff, just like it's no different from being addicted to to um, cigarettes or something heavier, cocaine even. Right. You, what happens when you take away cocaine or heroin from an addict? What happens when you take away cigarettes from an addict? What happens if you take away this food mm -hmm. This, this caffeine or this or or meat or cheese mm -hmm. that 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 your body is accustomed to for so long your body's going to react and usually yes it takes about 3 days the first 3 days are the toughest is it the third day that was the toughest or day 1 2 and 3 were, were it was all tough? it was day 2 and then day 3 day 4 was you know it, it really subsided by day 5 i felt great Got it. So day three, and that's typically it. For day three, your body starts basically going, I don't like what you're doing. <laughs> because because your body's like, because if you just change your diet one day, it's like, oh, your body's like, I can live with this one day. I know you'll go back and give me the stuff that I, the I know you'll go back man. and give me the the toxins the next yeah. day. By day two, the body's like, hey, where's where's my fix? By day three, your body's like, oh my God, this might be permanent. And, and it starts... <laughs> And it starts literally rebelling. Yeah. So, so one of my first cleanses, my on day three, my brain felt like it was in a pot of boiling water. It felt incredibly hot. The actual brain inside the skull. But when you feel my forehead, it's fine. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and then I asked my health coach, my my health advisor, what was that? And he asked me if I've ever done speed in my life, the drug speed. And I'm like, no. But you know what? I was on medication for ADD, which is Oh, similar too. to speed yeah. and and he, and I said but that was 10 or 15 years ago and he said your body it was still in you it's it's your body's getting it out and even though you might feel sick like you'll have sick symptoms on day three or day two day three maybe day four you'll have sick symptoms your body's not getting sick it's right. just con it's con flushing. Fl flushing out right. the bad stuff when the bad stuff leaves the body then then it doesn't feel good sometimes to alleviate that if you're ever going to do a heavy cleanse to alleviate the the flushing or the intense reactions of the body take vita mineral green oh, vita yeah. mineral green vita mineral green so while you're cleansing and your body's going through reactions take vita mineral green and if it's the more reactions the more vita mineral green to take so there is no like if you're still experiencing a hard time, just keep taking the more hard time, the more vitamin or green you take until your body levels off. Awesome. And just a caution with the master cleanse, because that's, that's really my only experience with cleanses, just like you said, Rich. Day one, it was fine. Day one, my body kind of felt like, really, we're doing this? Okay, fine, whatever. <laughs> Day two really started to get painful because I was going through caffeine withdrawal so I felt incredibly just like stupid sluggish um, and during the second half of day two I guess I had a lot of toxins built up in my legs because I just got done writing a book so I was sitting a lot and day two my legs started aching Oh, yeah. And it was so bad that I couldn't fall asleep on day two or day three. And really the only way to alleviate that pain was to go up, get up and go for a walk because sitting didn't work, sleeping didn't work, and it was painful. It was painful. But uh, after I got over that hump, and day th the end of day three is considered the hump with most cleanses, day four, it got a lot easier, and uh, from there my energy was consistently going up, my attitude was getting better and better, 
I personally believe that I lost some muscle from being on that cleanse and I was working out, but I don't know if that's just a me thing or if it's a universal thing. But overall, it was a good experience. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, you may lose... That's a good point. I wonder if we should talk about that, losing muscle or fat. I mean, um... I mean, you you felt... you Were you physically still strong during your cleanse? Yes. Okay, great. Great. So obviously when you lose weight, most of the weight is good weight, but obviously there's some muscle, but you're, you're still incredibly strong. Like when, when I go through my cleanses, I feel alive and stronger than ever too. So, uh, so let's, I mean, unless you're a bodybuilder, I don't think you'd have to worry about, if you're doing, again, do the research on the cleanse. As long as you're doing the cleanse the right way, um, you should be fine with the muscle. Yeah. Um, I was going to wrap up after this, but I just had one question for Sad. You had an awakening experience during a cleanse, right? Um, just talk like briefly one minute or two, mm -hmm. like how cleanse is related to the awakening experience. R remind me, um, I, I had three big ones. Um, you said one of them was during a cleanse, when you had a cleanse. I don't, I don't, mm, you don't remember. I'm, tr I'm trying to remember. That's but, when you had like new business ideas. Oh my stuff. God, yeah. oh my God. Yeah. Um, so I was doing yeah. a cleanse. And, um, and, uh, and, and I felt incredibly alive. I haven't done a cleanse in like a year, I think, at that time. And every time I do a cleanse, I remember, I, I remember what it's like to be alive again. I mean, there's just so much energy flowing through your body. 60% of our energy is, goes to digesting the food. Yeah. So 60% yeah. of the time we're eating so we can eat more. <laughs> right. Literally. That's yes. Yeah. That's yes. so so yes. it's just insane. So so when we stop eating, when we do a cleanse, sixty percent of the energy now goes elsewhere to moving your body, to the neurons going in your brain, to to thoughts, to ideas, to, to things coming in. And, and and I and during the cleanse I had I had an idea of a brand new business idea, and I, I, I gave a lecture. I, get, I gave a lecture on, um, on uh, it, was, it was for women only, and it was, it was, about, um, it was about how to attract a quality man. And, uh, and it was an amazing talk, and, and everybody had a lot of benefit from it. And, and I got this idea during a cleanse, because before the cleanse, I was like sluggish. My life felt like, seemed like it was going really slow and almost in reverse. And then during the cleanse, it's like, wow, I feel like I'm going to run a marathon and I'm getting ideas and I wrote the lecture for my class in like less than 30 minutes and I'm like, I didn't know I was going to teach a class on this, but I want to do this. <laughs> yeah. so. And all that because of the cleanse. And in fact, I even want to bring up, you know, the marketing copy that you wrote that brought in 20 people into the room. like. You have no training in how to market or do right copy, right? It just right. came through the inspiration, right? Yeah. And it's all because of the cleanse. So at least we yeah, we yeah, we closer to what, probably I'd say forty, no? Yeah, it so it was a good amount of people. It was it was a good amount of people. I capped it off to a certain number. Um it was it was a very popular class. And I'm just wondering what the I just was feeling like I need to take some time out, get silent, and look at what some of the underlying um, emotions might be behind that. So, um, what you said about the, the emotional eating, that is a s silence practice, because we were talking earlier about si mm -hmm. silence, that I relate to. Yeah. And it dawned on me a few times, like I remember the moments sitting on the couch and something didn't feel quite right and I didn't know that I was doing it but I actually was avoiding silence because there was something unresolved and to get away from what was unresolved I, w I felt myself wanting to go to the fridge mm -hmm. and the practice for me was okay I'm not really hungry uh, why am I wanting to go to the fridge? Like, really why? And not letting myself off the hook. Like, not going, oh, I'm just, you know, whatever. Really answering the question, what am I trying to get away from? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's interesting. I'm so glad you talked about 
the the trigger point of you're you're sitting, you're watching TV, and then you you suddenly feel triggered. I want to go eat. It's like television is a trigger. Uh, at least it is for me. And one of the things that I've, I'm glad that we talked about it is um, the trigger that I've just realized that I've had is coffee. Mm -hmm. And I've just started drinking regular caffeinated coffee. Over the last three days, I've had a cup in the morning every single time over the last three days. And my increase in eating has corresponded with my increase in caffeine. Mm -hmm. And I think what's, well, I know what's happening is that I'm feeling more agitated and I've used food in the past to help, you know, to, to quiet down that jangly feeling that I, that I get from coffee. So prior to this, prior to uh, drinking caffeinated coffee, I wasn't having this problem. So I'm glad that we had this discussion. So let's just look at the facts. <coughs> Alex has been eating less. Conan's been eating less the last two months. I've been eating less <coughs> the last two months. Rich has been eating more. So what do we do? Okay, when you're hungry, eat. When you're not hungry, don't eat. What dictates whether you're hungry or not? Check in here. Am I really hungry? Honestly, there's been days where I've just felt like eating a fig mm -hmm. for breakfast. And that's all I want. My body didn't want anything else. Mm -hmm. Let's really look at the facts here. Do we need food to survive? We can live without food for 30 days before our body starts to, before we, before this body doesn't work anymore. Mm -hmm. We can live without water for three days before the body, on average, on average conditions. It changes depending on what condition you're in, sunny, cold. We, we can live without water for three days on average before the body deteriorates. We can live without the breath for just three minutes. So with that being said, what kind of food do we need and how often and when? You were on something called a master cleanse for 40 days straight. 38, yeah, 38 days. 38 days straight where you did not put anything solid into your mouth. You did right. not eat food. All you drank was a liquid for 38 days straight and you felt better than you have been in 10 to 15 years. Yes. And My energy went way up. Yes, not to interrupt. No, good. Keep interrupting because <laughs> you did the cleanse. Uh, <laughs> one of the most one of the most interesting things about that cleanse for me, and this goes into what we were talking about with the triggers, mm -hmm. with the uh, emotional eating triggers. That cleanse, the master cleanse. Every morning, you mix yourself a pitcher of fresh squeezed lemon juice, maple syrup, cayenne pepper, and water. It keeps you full. So when you feel hungry and you drink a glass of it, you know that drinking a glass of it is going to kill that hunger. But dr going to drink a glass of it, like it's not particularly delicious. Like it's not bad, you know, it tastes pretty good, it's a little bit sweet. But what I found was that all of my emotional eating triggers were not functioning at that time because that wasn't an escape for me. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not advocating doing it or not doing it. I'm saying that that was a really nice reboot for me mm -hmm. because after that, I think it was clear for me to know the difference between I'm hungry, I'm going to go eat, or I'm going to go eat, but wait, I'm actually not hungry. So <laughs> what's going on? Yeah. So, okay, so to, cl so, so to clarify, the master cleanse consists of four ingredients. Basically, the master cleanse consists of drinking one drink for, 30, for 38 days straight. That's what he did, and it de depending on how you do it, it varies. But the point is, for 38 days straight, he drank, of, he drank one drink and one drink only. Mm -hmm. That consisted of four ingredients, yes. which is water. Water, fresh squeezed lemon juice cayenne pepper and grade B maple syrup. Is that insane or what? He put no food into it, but that's, there's so much more that we don't know about food and what it does to our body than we do know about food. It is documented as it is a fact that there are some, that there are breatharians out there who don't eat food, who have not eaten food or drank water for years. NASA studied these people because it is an inconvenience to feed astronauts in, sh in space because there's really no deli around the moon. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so it needs... It's about eating more consciously, doing our research to figure out what's best for us.
that's a beautiful point. And to kind of wrap it back into what we were talking about before, you know, earlier we were talking about silence. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about eating, but we're talking about eating consciously. Yeah. And earlier today, we were talking about um, how life just seems full of problems mm -hmm. and everything could be just kind of silently and subtly a way to escape that mm -hmm. feeling, that underlying feeling that, oh, I have all these problems, life is broken, I'm broken, so I'm going to do all these things that I'm used to doing to get away from it. You know, like, I'm going to go eat. Okay, what is there to do next? Let's go watch a movie. I'm going to listen to music. I'm going to, you know, whatever it is. But if you put that aside for a minute and you just kind of go, okay, yes, I can definitely look at all the problems and I can just continue going, oh my God, life sucks so bad <laughs> and uh, it needs fixing and everything like that. But if I put that aside and just kind of realize that while I'm here, I get to live for whatever reason I choose. People will have their opinions. They'll tell me, okay, you, you know, the most important thing li in life is a family or being successful or a lot of money or recognition or whatever it is. I can take their word for it. I can take what seems like society's opinion of it. And maybe they're right, maybe they're wrong. But ultimately, it's my life. And if I choose, I can make the focus of my life about doing what really feels right to me and really feeling good and enjoying life as much as I possibly can all the time. If that's my focus, then part of that is eating. Part of that is sitting down to the meal that no, not only do I want to taste, but that I know is going to make me feel good afterwards. And when I eat it, not eat it to get through eating it so I can get on to the next thing. Eat it because it tastes good and I want to experience that. Food. Well, there's a couple of things that I want to throw in there and that I didn't say, so I'm saying it now. If you're eating a salad, you know how it just doesn't fill you up. Throw in an avocado. It's one of the basics, core secrets of getting full with something incredibly healthy. If, if you want to kick the habit of coffee, eat raw cacao in the morning. It'll sharpen up your mind and give you that edge that you need throughout the morning and possibly throughout the day. And there's also juicing too that'll give you a pick-me-up and pretty soon I'll do a video on that. Basically, there's, <laughs> there's a ton to talk about in regards to food. If you're on the health kick and you want to explore more, give me a call. I'm here to help you. My name is Sayad.